danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads by a lot. Mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. I try to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. I tried for years. The biggest issue I see with so-called AI experts is that they, they think they know more than they do. Um, and they think they're smarter than they actually are. This, is, this tends to plague, plague smart people. They, they define themselves by their intelligence and they, they don't like the idea that a machine can be way smarter than them, so they discount the idea, which is fundamentally flawed. That's the wishful thinking uh, situation. I'm really quite close to, or very close to, to the cutting edge in AI and it scares the hell out of me. It's capable of vastly more than almost anyone knows. And the rate of improvement is exponential. It feels like we are the biological bootloader for AI, effectively. We are building it. And then we're building progressively greater intelligence. And the percentage of intelligence that is not human is increasing. And eventually, we will represent a very small percentage of intelligence. It's going to come faster than anyone appreciates. I think it's, with, e with each passing year, the sophistication of, of computer intelligence is, is growing dramatically. I, I mean, I really think we're on an exponential uh, improvement path of um, artificial intelligence. And the, and the number of smart humans that are developing AI is also increasing dramatically. I mean, if you look at like, the attendance at the um, AI conferences, they're, they're doubling every year. Um, they're getting full. Um, I have a, a, a sort of a young cousin of mine who's graduating from Berkeley um, in computer science and physics, and I asked him, like, well, how many of the smart students are studying AI in computer science? And the answer is all of them. Were well, they better? approach uh, or better outcome is that uh, we achieve democratization of AI technology, meaning that uh, no one company or uh, small set of individuals has control over advanced AI technology. I think that that's very dangerous. Um, it could also get stolen by somebody bad, you know, like some evil dictator of the country could send their intelligence agency to go steal it and gain control. It just becomes a very unstable situation, I think, if you've got any, um, any incredibly powerful AI. Um, you just don't know who's, who's going to control that. So it, it's not as though I think that the risk is that the AI would develop a will of its own right off the bat. I think it's more, that's, uh, the concern is that some, someone um, may use it in a way that is bad. Um, or, or, and even if they weren't going to use it in a way that's bad, that somebody could take it from them and use it in a way that's bad. That, that I think is quite a big danger. We are, all of us, already are cyborgs. Um, so you have a machine extension of yourself in the form of your, your phone and your computer and all your applications. You are already superhuman. But by far, you have more, more power, more capability than the President of the United States had you know, 30 years ago. Um, if you have an internet link, uh, you, you have an oracle of wisdom, you can communicate to millions of people, you can communicate to the rest of Earth instantly. Um, I mean, these are magical powers uh, that didn't exist not that long ago. So everyone is already superhuman. I think it's, the singularity is probably the right word because we just don't know what's going to happen um, once uh, there's intelligence substantially smart, greater than that of a human brain. I mean, most of the movies and TV featuring AI, they don't describe it in quite the way it's likely to actually take place. But I think you just have to consider, like even in the benign scenario where um, AI, if AI is much smarter than a person, um, what, what do we do? Yeah. What, what is that, what job do we have? I have to say that when, you know, when, when something is a, a danger to the public, then the, there needs to be some government agency, like 
regulators. The, the fact is, like, we've got regulators in, um, you know, the aircraft industry, car industry, uh, drugs, food, um, you know, and, and anything that's sort of a public risk. Um, I mean, I think this has to fall into the category of a public risk. Usually there'll be something, some new technology, that will cause damage or death. There will be an outcry. There will be an investigation. Years will pass. There will be some sort of insight committee. There will be rulemaking. Then there will be oversight, eventually regulations. This all takes many years. This is the normal course of things. If you look at, say, automotive regulations, how long did it take for seatbelts? to be implemented, to be required. You know, the auto industry fought seat belts, I think, for more than a decade. Successfully fought any regulations on seat belts, even though the numbers were extremely obvious. If you had a seat belt on, you would be far less likely to die or be seriously injured. It was unequivocal. And the industry fought this for years, successfully. Eventually, after many, many people died, Regulators insisted on deep belts. Oof. This is a this time frame is not relevant to AI. You can't take ten years from the point at which it's dangerous. It's too late. I, I'm not normally an advocate of regulation and oversight. I mean, I think one should generally err on the side of minimizing those things. But this is a case where you have a very serious danger to the public, and so therefore there needs to be a public body that um, has insight and then oversight on to confirm that everyone is uh, developing AI safely. Um, this is extremely important. Um, I think the danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads by a lot. Um, and nobody would suggest that we allow anyone to just build nuclear warheads if they want. That, that would be insane. So why do we have no regulatory oversight? This is insane. And the intent with OpenAI is to democratize AI power. Um, there's a quote that I love from uh, Lord Acton. He was the guy that came up with power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely, um, which is that uh, freedom consists of the distribution of power and despotism in its concentration. And so I think it's important if we have this incredible power of AI that if not be concentrated in the hands of a few and potentially lead to a world that we don't want. I'm not really all that worried about the short-term stuff, the things that are, um, not, like narrow AI is not a species level risk. Um, it, 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 will, it will result in dislocation, uh, in lost jobs and, um, it, you know, the, the, sort of better weaponry and that kind of thing. But it is not a fundamental species level risk, uh, whereas uh, digital superintelligence is. Uh, so it's really all about laying the groundwork to make sure that if, if humanity collectively decides that creating digital superintelligence is the right move, then we should do so very, very carefully. Um, very, very carefully. We're rapidly headed towards digital superintelligence that far exceeds any human. I think it's very obvious. <laughs>